The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in these last days that we are not to be ignorant of what Satan is doing to corrupt our world and so that we don't fall prey into his evil system. So it is absolutely important that you got to be aware of what Satan's doing and not fall into it. So we're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're living in a day and age, folks, where it's called Laodicea. So I want you to also turn to uh, Revelation chapter 3, please. Revelation chapter 3. Now this day and age is called Laodicea. Laodicea. Now what is Laodicea? Laodicea, what it means is the rights of the people. Rights of the people. I'm going to be covering the top ten women pastors used by the devil. Top ten women pastors that are used by the devil. So we live in a day and age where it's Laodicea. Laodicea. And Laodicea means equal rights, rights of the people. Isn't that the day and age that we live in today? You might say, well, absolutely. Aren't we all for equal rights? No, we're not. You might say, why is that? Because if we respected the right of every individual over here, then it would be a right that conflicts God's right. Because everyone has their own desire, their own way of doing things. And remember, the flesh is wicked. So we got to go by God's right, God's term. So God, he wants things done where, whether you, call, whether you like it or not, this is what God ordained. The man is supposed to be the pastor. A woman is Amen. not called to pastor. A woman is not called to pastor. You might say, why is that? The reason why is that is because God put different roles to different people because he ordained that so that they can better glorify him. Amen. So you got to understand that fact. So you got to understand this fact that God, what he ordained is that men should be pastors in the ministry, not women. Why is that, pastor? Why is that? Because God hates women? No, it's because the reason why is God ordained women for their function that glorifies him, just like he ordained children in their function to glorify him. Men in their function to glorify him. By the way, not all men are called to be pastors either. So is God discriminatory prejudice for not calling certain men to be pastors? So the idea is this. The idea is whatever God called you to be, you sh there is no greater calling, no greater happiness than the role God put you in. You got to realize this too. If you think that that is prejudice, you got to realize this, okay? God made me a Korean, not a Caucasian. God, <laughs> there's a person out there who's a Hispanic. God didn't make you black. And God didn't make a black person a white person. Are we all going to get mad at each other? Oh God, why did you make me born this way? And that's why you got homosexuals who are whining, oh, I was born wrong, and they want to go through surgery and become a woman. You see this kind of messed up thinking? That's what happens with equal rights. What you want is you're ungrateful for what God has put you in, that role, and you want a different role. Okay, so let's cover this issue here. Revelation chapter 3. We are in Laodicea. Notice verse, 15, uh, verse 14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, this, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. We're in a day and age where it's not hot or cold. It's lukewarm in between. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That is Laodicea. God, what makes him sick is that you're in between. Why? Because you're being equal, in between, equal rights. So that's what God don't like. Okay, the top 10 women pastors used by the devil. So let's see these famous women today that have a great influence among churches today. So it is debatable. People can give different lists of women, whatever they want to do. But uh, I'm going to give this certain list right here. One of them is Bobby Houston. Bobby Houston runs the, hill, the famous church Hillsong. Hillsong. So let's cover Hillsong right here. Bobby Houston. 
What is wrong with Hillsong, Pastor? What is wrong with Hillsong? That shows that there's something wrong with you. I don't even need to explain to you what is wrong with Hillsong. What is wrong with Hillsong? You should know what is wrong with Hillsong. What do you mean, what is wrong with Hillsong? <laughs> so Bobby Houston in Hillsong. What is Hillsong? You don't, well, in case you don't know Hillsong, they're the church that's growing like chains all around the world. The reason why is because of their music group. So because of their catchy music group, they're attracting a lot of young people inside their churches. She works with her husband, Brian. They have both worked heavily to encourage women and youth to join churches. So she's one of the most famous preachers because of the Hillsong name. Holly Wagner, Holly Wagner. The name of the church is Oasis. Holly Wagner. The name of the church is Oasis. L.A. So Holly Wagner, a little bit about her is that she's usually busy with, her, she preoccupies herself with her church community. She runs the Oasis Church with her husband, Philip Wagner. She serves as a champion for women's needs. Ah, remember, we're at a day and age of women's lib, right? Equal rights, equal rights. So that's why they can become more popular and famous. You know how to be popular women? You just join the women's rights movement. If you do that, then you will get all the popularity. You'll become a, a, a millionaire, billionaire like Oprah. So you just join this group. You join the group where God is not pleased with. And then you'll become rich very fast. And then if you're a Christian woman at that who joins this kind of movement, what did God say about Laodicea? I will what? Spew you out of my mouth. You got to avoid anything that has to do with this, folks. You got to stay in the uh, role that God put you in. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this name right, but Nadia Bowles Weber. Nadia Bowles Weber. The name of the church is Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Evangelical... Lutheran Church in America. Nadia Balls B O L Z Weber. So the Evangelical Lutheran Church. And let's see here. So much writing over here. <laughs> Now, if you, if you look at Nadia Bowles Weber, she's not a hard one to miss. You'll easily notice her. You might say, how so? Because she's covered in tattoos all over. And then, so she covers herself with tattoos from all over, and then she speaks with an attitude. And then, according to this article, but that's a part of her charm. <laughs> Any of you guys want to marry that kind of woman? Help yourself. <laughs> She's, she, <laughs> I, I never seen a woman covered with tattoos from head to toe who would be part of a model company. I don't, I don't know about that. See, <laughs> part of her charm. Anyways, okay, she's drawn hundreds of people in to see her uh, speak and preach the Bible, and she goes from a unique, different standpoint. Now, the Washington Post, because they're such a liberal news company, do you think that they're going to mention about her? Of course they're going to mention about her. See, anything that joins more close to this side, the liberal side, of course then you're going to get famous. Of course you're going to get famous. Hey, if this pastor got surgery and became a woman, you don't think I'll become famous? I'll probably get more subscribers on YouTube. The current ones will drop me, obviously, because they're saying he apostatized. But see, that's the thing. You want to get popular and famous, you yield into this system, equal rights. You fall more into this system, you will be popular very, very fast. Very, very fast. Okay, so let's cover other uh, issues, but let's cover this verse right here, what the Bible says at 1 Timothy chapter 2. What should women do? The Bible says this, verse 10, but which becometh woman professing godliness <coughs> with good works. You women should show forth godliness and good works. And how is this done? What you're going to notice right here is in verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. This is very important to understand. It is important to understand that the role of the woman is that she is not to usurp authority over men. You might say, why? 
Why? You don't have to ask why if God says so. That's it. Just like children obey your parents. This certain man I called you to preach, but this other man I did not call you to preach. Why, God? No, that's, that's the attitude. Why would you ask that question if you want to rebel, if you want to do things your own way? That shows that your heart's not right. Amen. If your heart is right with God, you're not going to ask him why. You're going to say, all right, Lord, thy will be done. Yep. Did you see Jesus asking why at the Garden of Gethsemane about him dying on the cross? Why? No, he didn't do that. So you got to realize this, is that it's always according to the will of God. But the idea is this, is that ever since the Garden of Eden, that's the reason why. Because in verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Because of the curse at the Garden of Eden. The curse for women back at the Garden of Eden was to become pregnant, was to bring forth children with pain, as well as to submit under their husbands. And then the curse of the men was that they are to uh, be accountable in taking care of the household as well as to uh, work by the sweat of their brow. I know a man who, which is a shame, they let their wives do all the work and they just play video games at home. What is that? That's just nonsense. That's just nonsense. Everyone has a role that God puts you in. And you got to realize this. All of us are under the curse of sin, so sorry. We're all under the curse of sin. Until we all die and go to heaven, then we're all equal as children of God because we're all made into the image of Jesus Christ. But until then, you're on this cursed earth, and this cursed earth is not fair or equal to you. There's no such thing as that in this earth. In this earth, it's all unfair. So God puts you in roles where you can survive and live according to this world. That will glorify him. All right. This woman is really famous. Beth Moore. Beth Moore. She's all over the stores. Beth Moore. Living Proof Ministries. Beth Moore. Living Proof Ministries. I remember that we had a couple here in our church. They were attending this church that's supposed to be King James. But then they were giving out books by Beth Moore. Now what kind of a Sorry excuse of a Baptist church is that. Now, you got to realize this, Baptist churches are compromising. You know why? Because they don't have their own women who can set forth proper examples. They have to turn to women who go to this kind of liberal movement for their example. That's not it. We need women according to verse 10. That's what we need. Not women who ignore verse 12. That's the kind of women we get. We get women who are anti verse 12 rather than pro verse 10. Amen. We need that. We need that. So Beth Moore, how she became the woman that she is today is because a college Bible studies class changed her whole life and perspective. So what happened now is that she heads the Living Proof Ministries with her husband, Keith, and then they raised their daughter to be part of the church too. And Hopefully she will not become the next woman pastor. That will be unfortunate for her. The other one, which we all know, uh, kind of looks like the Joker and does not really look like a woman, Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer. She is, she is extremely famous, and she's one of the, I believe I covered in the video, one of the top ten uh, richest pastors. So she's not just a teacher or a preacher, but she also gives out best, she's a best-selling author. And I believe also she has her own reference Bible. If you're really curious, you can go buy one. If you women come to our church with the Joyce Meyer reference Bible, <laughs> Lord bless you. <laughs> Lord bless you. That's all I'll say. I don't know why I can say, Lord bless you. <laughs> Let's also look at uh, several, <laughs> several verses here. 1 Peter chapter 5. So what is the role of a pastor, you got to understand? The role of a pastor is authority. It's where people have to submit to the authority. What did you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2? The role of a woman is to not usurp authority over man. That's why she is not qualified to pastor. A lot of people would like to bring up Deborah. They would like to bring up Deborah, Deborah, and Deborah, Philip's daughters as the evangelists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They would like to use all those examples. But the problem with those examples is two things. There are two problems with these things. 
One, you got to realize this. There was, not a man in the, uh, there was not a man who stood up on his feet to take care of the position God called him in. So obviously, the Lord, just like Jesus said, I'll even use the rocks to cry out, he'll use a woman to teach them a lesson. And the Lord has done that. That's why Balak, he said, I'm not going to go unless you go, Deborah. So that's why Deborah told him, then that means the honor will go to a woman and not to you. So you understand that fact. The second thing you also got to understand is this. Other women in the Bible that you see, it is not uh, usurping the authority over men positions. These are simply seeing revelations from God and preaching them. Joel chapter 2 mentions sons and daughters who would prophesy. See? So this has nothing to do with usurping authority position. We're talking about a leadership position over a church. This is a totally different aspect. 1 Peter chapter 5, we'll read... <coughs> Verse 1, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. What do you do with these elders? Look at verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto what? Unto the elder. See, it's a position of authority. It's a position of authority. And God did not call women to take that kind of authority. So that's according to 1 Timothy chapter 2. All right, the next one is Anita C. Hill. Anita C. Hill. So let me go through this quickly. That way I can go through the other teachings here. Reconciling Works, Lutherans for Full Participation. That's the name of her ministry. So she's a famous pastor who worked in Minnesota, North and South Dakota. Now, believe it or not, she's been an advocate for LGBT members. <laughs> to join her church. See, the more you go here, the more you'll become what? Nah. The other one is called, uh, the, other, the other person is Christine Kane. Christine Kane. So what is her work and what is her ministry? She's on the outback of Australia and she works with her husband, Nick. And the name of their ministries, Equip and Empower Ministries. You see that? What is the movement nowadays that attracts a lot of women? Women power, empower, women empowerment. That, see, if you go close to these terms, the more that you'll be popular, the more you'll get a lot of people. The other person, which is no surprise, Victoria Osteen. Victoria Osteen. Why shouldn't a woman preach, Pastor? Because if you compare her preaching with her husband's preaching, her husband actually preaches better than her. Okay, that is how bad it is. Her husband, so her husband preaches better than her. So good advice. Just stay in the role that the Lord puts you in. Now, Joyce Meyer can preach better than Joel Osteen, though. <laughs> That's just even worse. So we got men who can't even fulfill the role of a pastor like they should, and women who cannot fulfill the role that God called them to be in. Such a mess. So Victoria Osteen, she obviously is popular because of her husband, Joel Osteen, and runs one of the biggest mega churches in the nation. His is the largest church in America. And she's actually known to be a co-pastor of the Lakewood Church. So she's a co-pastoring. So... I guess, well, it makes sense. Joel Osteen doesn't seem like he got guts in him anyway. He's not the type of guy that you would picture who would preach hellfire and brimstone. No, he doesn't seem that type of guy. It's like you can push him around a bit, it looks like. The other one is Bernice, Bernice King. Bernice King, former New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Former New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. She's been one of the more famous female pastors throughout history because she is a child of Martin Luther King Jr. That's why. She retired from her post at 2011, according to the Christian Post. The other one is Heidi Newmark. Heidi Newmark, Trinity Lutheran Church. Notice a lot of them are connected with Lutherans. That's pretty interesting right here. My guess is this, because... There are Lutherans out there who are sympathetic toward Calvinism. Calvinists, they study. 
So it wouldn't be a surprise if you're a woman attending a Bible study. It would catch a lot of interest in you. So because of that, you're gaining a lot of knowledge. You want to teach that to other people. So that would make a lot of sense. So Heidi Newmark, she's the next one, Trinity Lutheran Church. So she's been working at that church since 2003. Before that, as a pastor of the Transfiguration Lutheran Church in New York. Transfiguration Church. But anyways, so... The point is right here is that women might be saying, well, then what can I do for the Lord? Listen, friend, there are men who are not pastors, and they got a lot of work they can do for the Lord too. So just because the Lord did not call you to pastor a church does not mean that 99% of your life is robbed and you got nothing to do for the Lord. Come on, there's a lot of things in life beside pastoring. The idea that, oh, you're taking away everything from women and I got nothing to do but just to raise children and cook and do nothing for the Lord. Well, well, my friend, if you cook and take care of children, you're doing a great service for God at the household in supporting the husband and children. And the children can be raised in the admonition of the Lord and become, can become the next great preacher someday. What do you mean that's, that's not a treasured position? The next generation is what changed this whole country. That's not important to you? By the way, that's, I didn't even say that's your only role. You can, just because you know a lot of Bible knowledge, it may not mean you can't pastor a church, but you can sure teach other women. You can teach Sunday school classes because this is not a usurping authority over grown adult men. So for crying out loud, there are many things you can do for the Lord. You can witness to other people on how to get saved. The Bible says that the women proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. There's nothing wrong with that. You can sing. You can play instruments. You can help out the church. What do you mean? It's just because you don't get a pastor's position, you all freak out half to death. And you got to realize this. Majority of men are not even pastors. I wish majority of men were pastors, but they're not. So that's pretty telling that there's a lot of things you can do, women, for the Lord. So just calm down. Don't throw a fit. Just calm down and realize there's a lot of things you can do the, for the Lord that can glorify and honor Him. All right, so these are the women that you want to avoid. And as much as I want to name this lady, I'll just write her down, but I don't think she's one of the ten. But this woman, she is used by the devil. Yeah. This woman is definitely used by the devil. I don't like her, period. She has been responsible for the destruction and the downfall of this country I did not like her speech at Hollywood on what she said that people said, oh, let's make her the next president of the United States. Thank God Hillary didn't become the president. I'm not saying I approve of Trump, but I don't like, I definitely don't like Hillary. And you know, this country is just going downhill even more and more and more. We got women who are not setting an example for other women. We got women who set up junk for other women to follow. That's the kind of women we're looking at today. Man, we need women to rise up to the occasion where your name could be in the book of the Bible for being the role God called you to be. We need a Ruth. We need an Esther. We need, uh, we need different women in the Bible who helped out the Apostle Paul in his ministry. We need these kind of women. We need, you know what we need? We need a woman like Mary who was lowly and humble and God gave her the privilege out of all other women to give birth to the Son of God. I mean, what in the world? We need these kind of women. I am, I am just sorely disgusted with this day and age. Amen. You have a thing against women, Pastor? No, I don't. No, I don't. I have a thing against, I have a thing against devils who corrupted our women. I have, a, I have a great thing against devils who corrupt our women. I have a thing against demon-possessed Jezebels who corrupted our women today. The idea, man, about women empowerment and then that's not empowerment when you dress up like a slut and men have to treat you like a property. When, uh, Ariana Grande, women empowerment, she dresses like that and the men will look at her like a property, not women empowerment. The kind of garbage, this is just nonsense, man. Makes me stinking angry, makes me stinking angry. I want women back then in the Bible. Amen. Those kind of women who stood up for Jesus Christ. You know what Esther did? I, I like Esther, you know what she said? If I perish, I perish. Right. Do you know how many ma male preachers, do you know how many male preachers took that quote from that woman and turned to like hundreds of sermons outside of that? Crying out loud, we need women like that. We need women like Mary back then, 
who was humble, submissive, surrendered herself to the Lord. Because of that, she got the greatest honor where she played a part in giving birth to the Son of God where all of mankind can receive Jesus Christ for their salvation. Imagine if you're a mom and you are responsible for giving birth to a child that would save the whole world. What an honor and privilege, man. What an honor and privilege. By the way, God did not give that privilege to a guy, by the way. <laughs> Joseph did not cry and whine and say, I want surgery. I want to look like a tranny. I want to be a woman. So that I, uh, that's not fair, God, that I didn't give birth to the Son of God. See, this is the kind of disgusting mental illnesses we're going through. You know, I mean, you know what, what we got today? We got men who are acting girly, yeah. and they want to be defended. Yeah. So then it's not just uh, women who are being defended. Now it's being guys being defended because they don't have the guts to stand up on their own two feet. And they're, tr I mean, what kind of a sick world we live in, man? It's just too sick. I just can't wait to get raptured. Man, the only reason why I'm ranting right here is because I'm erasing this board. <laughs> A little bit more there, preacher. It's still dirty. It's still dirty there. Still dirty. 